This next panel discussion is specifically about jobs in photography. My name is David McDonald. I'm on the Faculty of Multimedia Production here at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. So I teach a photography class and we have two awesome people to give you just a ton of information from very different angles. Uh, Nidanis, why don't you just uh, tell the folks about yourself, uh, what's your background, what are you, uh, what are you doing these days and, um, and how, how are you doing? Okay, I'm doing good. Um, thank you for having me here today. Um, my name is Nadonis Rose Green. I'm a photographer from Leech Lake Reservation. Can y'all hear me okay? Okay. Um, so I'm actually on the road right now going to a shoot in DC. And we decided to stop in the mountains here on a way to do some photography for a few organizations I work with. So. And I threw on my flip flops <laughs> hiking through the Appalachians. So I had to take a picture of my flip flops, but I'm self-taught. I'm a self-taught photographer and um, I travel around quite a bit. Most of the time for the past two years, I've been strictly located in Minnesota, but I do plan on furthering out. I've made a few publications and newspapers such as the Washington Post, the Star Tribune, um, a couple magazines, and we just had a missing murdered indigenous relatives um, discussion come out in the Minnesota Women's Press magazine. So that was um, pretty cool. And then I have some uh, photos coming out in Antoine Truer's book, everything you wanted to know about Indians, but were afraid to ask the young readers edition. And so I have a lot of projects going on. So I'm back and forth all the time. I really enjoy what I do because I get to meet new people all the time. And yeah, before, before we jump to the pictures, let, just out of curiosity, you did, sure. uh, what was it that, you know, said photography? I am into photography. Yeah. So I just started photography in 2017. Uh, it was like the the last month and then I was photographing for like a year I really wasn't into it I was just you know playing around and then in towards the end of 2018 is when I really start picking up like trying to really learn my craft and master it and um that's that's when I guess you could say my career started taking off and this year I was able to open up four galleries, um, one in Bemidji at Watermark Art Center. I opened up a gallery in, at Indigenous Roots in St. Paul. And I have one at uh, Minneapolis Institute of Arts. And I had one at Franklin Library. And then I had one at All My Relations. So I guess five at All My Relations in Minneapolis, but that one's over now. And that was a bringer home exhibit. That, this, that's big time. I mean, to have five, I mean, four or five concurrent uh, exhibits. So uh, I, let me ask you a technical one before we get into the edit sure. editorial, we look at your, uh, the photos. What, what do you have to say about the actual equipment in order to take a good picture? Are we are we going with Anya honest opinions? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Lie through your teeth. It's all right. <laughs> so I don't think it really matters what type of camera you have. It's all about how how you want to portray your story that you're telling to whoever's going to view your photos. Um, the right angles, the right lighting, all of that plays a key. I. I pretty much taught myself how to do photography, watching YouTube tutorials, just playing with my camera. Um, there's a lot of stuff about my camera I still don't know about, but I know what I see in front of me and I try to capture that. Um, it does help if you shoot like raw versus JPEG and all that, like cell phones. A lot of these newspapers, like if you were if you were trying to do events, they just send their reporters and journalists out with iPhones. 
And I guess you're limited when you're on iPhones versus uh, one you can stick an SD card in and take home and work on Photoshop and all this other stuff. But what kind of camera do you have? I shoot with the Sony a7 III. It's a mirrorless camera. Oh, okay. So it's it's kind of it's kind of lighter weight than the actual camera, but it's I'm still learning about all of that stuff because. What what about different lenses? Uh, any particular um, lens? A Sony 85 art lens, 85 millimeter, and then I shoot with a Sony 2.4 7200 millimeter. And those are my two lenses I shoot with. If I heard you right, you're saying, yes, if you could, I mean, a good camera helps, but it's really the photographer's eye. You have to be passionate about it. If you're passionate about it, I think you'll succeed. You'll be successful in what you do. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you, you're have skyrocketed in like two, three years now, through well, whatever it is, 2017, you started and now mm -hmm. here it is 2021. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to further up, so there's no stopping. It, it takes a lot of my time and everyone's willing to work with me and there's so much support. So all of that I, is extremely helpful. I think it's because Nidanis leads with her heart and that is evident. Uh, when, uh, when she's on a shoot, um, it, it is all about uh, you know, the, the, the art, it's all about the relationship. And, and that comes through in the photos, uh, which now we can see, I, should I share a screen? Go ahead and just tell the story behind the photo, whatever you want to share, because uh, these are obviously very intense, awesome pics. Okay, so this one I was trying to portray, like strong indigenous men in the community. Um, it was taken on Boom Island. This was like, probably one of my first shoots not like my first shoot but in that around that time area that time frame my photoshop skills are very very minimal I can blemish out but most of the time I put my settings inside of my camera as I shoot if that makes any sense versus throwing a filter on so I, I try to stay away from all of that stuff. That's, that's, that makes total sense. And it's going to segue later on into what uh, Paul is going to say about uh, all the, the wonders of uh, Photoshop. But uh, I was wondering, um, do you edit every all of your photos in Photoshop? Or do you sometimes just take a picture and boom, that's it? Sometimes I take a picture and just upload it from there. but. Um, most time I do open them in Photoshop just so I can put my little logo on, but I'm um, having, I'm um, actually have some people that helping me with other designs, like putting water, starting to put watermarks on my photos. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm learning all of that stuff as well. So. All right. And now what's the story behind this photo? Okay. So that's water in the sunset and I just, I think things are sometimes bolder and stronger in black and white. And so just the contrast in it and the way the waves, like it just looks so smooth and silky. I was like, oh, I got to take this picture. <laughs> and did you, what, so tell us some more about black and white. I mean, the first picture was black and white as well. And this one is, uh, you, you take everything in color and then when you get to Photoshop, that's when you decide. Yeah, I just, you know, uh, that's if I use a filter I'm sorry back to that same question if I use a filter it's a black and white filter <laughs> okay there we go all right all right now here we got silhouette shot what do you what's the story behind this one okay that's the same group of guys in the front it was at sunset and all I did was I pushed up the blacks and heighten the, the orange and that was it. Other than that, I set exactly how it was what I seen in front of me. Huh. And you're setting the people up. I mean, you're talking, you're the director, so to speak. Yep. You're saying you stand there, you stand there, all that stuff. Yep. It, how much of a hassle is that uh, for you as a photographer? Um, it's, it's tedious. It's like you, 
you want somebody who's going to really, really pay attention to direction. Um, and sometimes I just let it, I like to tell them, just let it go. Pretend I'm not here. Do you be in your zone, your element. All right. This and I, just, a... I like silhouettes because how it picks up on her, the shawl fringes, it's just, that was so cool to me. <laughs> so here's a question for you. So you got the sun going down, you got to hit it right at the right time. How many uh, shots did you take of this particular image? Okay, that's a good question. So because she was dancing, um, she danced for about 15 minutes. Okay. And so I just, I put my camera in fast shutter mode and I just clicked. Um, there was probably maybe about, I want to say 300 pictures, maybe a hundred didn't turn out because she was either out of the frame or um, it just blurred because it, it, it was shooting back to back. And so I picked out my best, my favorite ones out of there and went how, to that. How tough is that process when you got, you're looking at 300, okay, you know, let's say 100 are garbage, they don't work at all. Now you're down to 200 and now you got to take, go from 200 to one. Um, it's not that difficult. I try not to go back and look through my photos again because then it gets harder and harder and more, I don't know, but I do try to narrow it down, see what I like when I first run through and that's what I share. But I never throw away any of my photos because I can always, I always have plans for, for most of them. Mm -hmm. Even if they are blurry, they can make a, back, a great background for yep. graphics or- Or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you, do you uh, combine photos in Photoshop or do you just work on a single image? No, I just work on a single image. I don't know how to do that. Some more stuff that, I, well, actually I like to keep my pictures exactly how they are. So I don't want to learn right. how to do that. And that's the big discussion we always have with, now with the, the beauties of Photoshop is, you know, is it photography if you just take a picture like this or is photography also taking a whole bunch of pictures, putting them all together and having a lot of, of fun in Photoshop? Paul, you've got a lot of stuff to explain when, you, when it comes to you, but uh, this is great. Now, this shot, I imagine you took more than one or two of it uh, to get the right one. Um, her, um, she's, she's winnowed rice before. So, and the only thing, like you only have a few seconds before that sun goes down. So mm -hmm. I actually didn't get that many shots of this shot. It just so happened to be at the right time. The wind was up. I was like, let's do this. I maybe took like 20 shots of this shot. Can I ask you if there are days when you're uh, shooting something, you, you're setting it up, you know what you want, and you just feel like, uh, uh, I'll, I'll keep it vague, the, the spirits are with you. The vibes are right, and boom, they're helping you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so... I'm an empath and I, I have to feel the area. I have to feel, I have to vibe with you in order for me to have a successful shoot. I feel like it's, it's more, um, it's a stronger image if you're there and are able to capture emotions and feelings in your photography. Mm -hmm. Is that what you kind of asked? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a hundred percent because you can't really define it. But right. uh, every artist, every photographer, you know, some and and you feel some days you're on, some days it's just not clicking. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like when an artist first starts sketching, their first three sketches out, they crinkle up and toss to the side. That's how I feel with my photography. I feel like. My first five, 10 minutes are just not good at all until I get into my zone. So get, get the groove going and all. Yep. So, I mean, I find it it's fascinating that you you got the bug or whatever, you you suddenly started in 2017. 
But were you drawing pictures? Were you uh, like uh, artistically motivated before that when you're growing up? And I was in art class growing up. Like I used to like to draw portraits. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say I was great at it, but <laughs> I did like to draw portraits. And but other than that, I I would have never guessed that I would be great at photography. And it was so like. It was, wasn't was later in my life till I found out that, hey, I can do this. I have a, it's more than just love for it. It's, I have a passion for it. Okay. Like, I have to have my camera. I feel like I, I feel like I don't exist in this world without my camera and lenses, so. We got a question here from Kiana Woody. How do you get your models? And, uh, who do you ask to get the models that you're working with? How do you set it up? Uh, set up your shoots okay so um when I first started out I would ask the people hey I'm learning how to do photography um can we do these shoots and most of my photography is free like I do so much of it that um I just give it to I give it back to the whoever's posing for me to use for whatever, hey, this is an exchange. Um, but what was the question? How do you get your models? How do you? Oh, yeah. So um, so I would ask them in exchange, hey, we could do this. We could do that if you'll come shoot for me. And that was for like the first year. But then now I have so many people requesting to come shoot with me that it's it's not a problem to find anybody uh, to um do scenes with so they're so, they're uh, they're emailing you now yeah. they're calling you up uh, that's a good yeah. deal <laughs> nice um so listen here's another one in uh the indigenous sense of it is did you feel that this whole career as a photographer was just not really a viable option as a uh, a Native American. Kind of. I mean, being a woman too, um, it's a hard industry. It's very competitive. It's, I mean, it's, you can go into a store and anybody can buy a camera. So um, I didn't think anything of it when I, like I said, when I first did it, and then I was like, you know, this is really working out. So and, and what would you say to, uh, again, a, uh, uh, a young kid growing up on the res who hasn't found their path yet, but has sort of some sort of creative instincts, what, what kind of advice would you give to that person? Keep going, keep encouraging them, um, don't give up. Um, I... It's really weird because I have I have a youth with me right now who I took out of state with me. She's never left the res, so <laughs> she's with me and she's, um, I was like, hey, let's work on a portfolio for you. Come right along with me on this trip and I got you, we'll, work, we'll build up your portfolio. And um, I've been showing her how to work the camera and how to do things as we're on our way. And I have another photographer here with me too. He's he's into media as well. So um and he's gonna be helping me out in DC. So yeah, so so what do you have going on in DC? What's the we have a line three event out there? Okay. All right. So yeah, here's that's you've led to another uh, question, which is uh artistic versus political or advocacy versus art so that is um oh that them are difficult <laughs> that's a difficult one to answer because there's so many people out there who some aren't into like i would say half of the people that follow me are for the pipeline and half aren't so it's difficult for me to decide do i want to post these but i'm for the water so 
Um, but then you do have other, you do have other scenarios that happen and um, like with the missing and murdered indigenous women, that's, I don't, my, my pictures tend to come out really beautiful and I know it's not a beautiful thing. It's, it's murdered. It's, how do you say it? It's heartbreaking, but, and I know it triggers trauma and, but it has to be out there. Like we, there has to be ways for people to, yeah, I, I'm going to end up going into other, um, discussions, but yes, you're, that was a difficult question. Sorry. I'll make a comment here about, um, you know, when uh, an artist is doing their work um, and, and it's coming from an authentic source, an authentic inspiration, um, those other issues, how it's interpreted by other people uh, is like a secondary or, or third or maybe not even consideration um, because, uh, and, and I have had the uh, privilege of you know, working with Nadanis uh, uh, on some photos for um, uh, Oshki Gizek, and uh, it, it's just what you're, uh, what what she is doing, like is above and beyond the the issues, if that makes any sense, um, and and it it draws attention to issues and how a person is going to perceive it. Um, it, it allows the beauty to come through, even through the difficult issues. Mm, okay. And, and that is, I mean, that is what art does. That is what good media does, right? I always come back to this quote that um, I'm sitting in the chair of, uh, of a, a beloved teacher that we had on our campus, <clears throat> and um, Gagigi Benesi Bun. And he said, um, you know, that humans are the ones that place judgment on things. Um, all of creation is what you know creator placed here and and we you know who are we to judge really but we try and and you know so the artistic expression um media expression of just putting it out there is kind of like this creative act right i mean not kind of it is <laughs> it is a creative act and and so you know uh, about whether it's political or artistic or whether you know like putting it in categories that's that's a moot point really yeah. you know that's an academic point that's what that's what teachers do right, right. Uh, i want you to shoot this i want you to shoot that right <laughs> <laughs> well listen and Adonis, i know you gotta uh you're on the road and uh appreciate that if there's any other questions uh if you can hang out that'd be great um we'll get bring paul in on it uh now so that he can um talk to us about it. And I'm really anxious to hear what Paul has to say about uh, Adonis' uh, experiences in photography. Uh, let me quick ask, are there, yeah, any, uh, that's no more questions. So uh, can you hang out uh, longer or do you have to hit the road? Yeah, or... I'll just, um, I'll just mute my, myself and turn the camera off and put you over the speaker. Okay, that'd be good. And, and concentrate on what you're doing, okay? Yep. <laughs> All Thank right. you for having me here, Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Miigwech. All right. All right. All right, Paul. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out. Obviously, uh, kind of an unusual circumstance there, but we appreciate the uh, your the patience. And yeah. let's just jump right in. You you know something about photography? What do you think of Nidanis's uh, experiences? Yeah, I, th I I think her work is great. I think she has it nailed in just like honestly, like her her confidence, like just, just diving in and just, and just taking photos. And yeah, the first couple will be bad, but you know what? You're going to get better. And just to not be afraid is probably the, is just such, such good advice, you know? And honestly, you do it long enough and, and you end up becoming the expert. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, I guess I am the one with most of the answers in this case. And I also want to point out that like, I'm jealous of her Sony camera, which is probably awesome. I don't have a cool mirrorless like you, it's okay to use your phone. So I still think the quality of photos coming from uh, your phone is, are outstanding. So that's what people care about. And honestly, people are usually viewing your images on a phone as well. So who cares if it's not 
uh, you know, a 24 megabyte file. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all about you, you know, uh, the person behind the lens, you know, taking the right shots. So I don't know. That's, that's just my download. I got, I, I guess I got for you. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good download. And again, it's what everyone keeps coming back to it. Yeah. You could have the best $10,000 camera in the world, but if you don't have the eye, if you're not, your brain's not thinking right. And yeah. Think, and, uh, and I, I Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I no, but no, no. I, we're we're here to listen to you. you go for it. <laughs> no, I I think I think that stuff can kind of be a crutch. It's so interesting. So just a little bit about me. My name is Paul Tranny, basically an Adobe expert, where I show people how to use Photoshop and Illustrator. So I'm very much design. I graduated with an with an illustration degree, um, 20 years, 25 years ago, a long time ago, um, but. Uh, so, so anyways, that's like a little bit about me. I think once you get into say software and uh, like maybe even apps these days, sometimes filters and things like that can be like a crutch. You're trying to make an okay photo look better. It can maybe do that, but sometimes people rely too much on effects is all I'm saying. So uh, that's why I like uh, Nadanis's, you know, sort of pure photography, which is awesome. So tell us yeah. some more about what, what you do. You, you, yeah. I, you, you talk to people and, uh... mm -hmm. yeah, I talk to lots of people. Um, uh, yeah. So like, I'm, I'm a designer, I guess, like illustrator at heart, uh, but I do a lot of photo manipulation. So what you see behind me is just like photo manipulations, right? I didn't, I didn't take hardly any of these photos. These are like Adobe stock photos and I just combined them together. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've been doing this for like 25 years, but my background's Flash and CD-ROMs and Director and all this, you know, I've done website design and all that stuff uh, in the past. And luckily, I think what's kept me successful is being able to adapt to sort of the next trends. I know you guys were mentioning AR and VR earlier, which seems like way out there. The cool thing about that is like, guess what? It's like new to everybody. So even if you're a student learning about it, you're no different than somebody who's been in the industry for 20 years getting started. You both have to start at the same level. So you have a chance to be an expert in these new fields as they come around and get used to technology changing. Just get used to it. You're like, oh, this crazy thing came out. <laughs> Try to be excited about it. I know I am, uh, but it's, it's just ex exciting new opportunities. Um, and new like markets that are opening up, which I think are like really fun. So yeah, just get excited about that stuff. You don't want to be the person that's like, oh, the web is a trend. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It'll go away. You know, books are where it's at or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you could, if you could make a living off of doing book covers, then I'm actually jealous of you. <laughs> but there's plenty of new things out there and exciting. So, so you're saying that we should be not having a panel discussion, but uh, just a bunch of series of TikToks. Going through, yeah, zoom, boom, boom, we zoom, could do boom. TikTok. Hey, man, TikToks, come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, so I don't know. My brain's going all over the place. Well, you know? well take your brain and have it uh, focus to this. Is I ask this to my students mm -hmm. sometimes, and uh, I am always kind of surprised that they can't really jump way out there. And I say, what's it going to be like 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be photography? Yeah. Is, is there going to be, you know, so what, what do you think uh, 20 years from now, if they look back at this awesome panel with this awesome panelists mm -hmm. and they, that what would they, um, you know, it'd be like us saying the, uh, you know, the eight track tape or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you, yeah. what, what's, what's the future? Tell us what's yeah. going to be like. I would, I would love to look into my crystal ball, but I think a good way to like, like, determine what's coming in the future is to kind of also like, I don't know, just like kind of look at things were in the past and how drastically they've changed. You know, we remember where we couldn't pull up the internet on our phones, right? And we actually used our phones to like call people and things like that. So if you think that's crazy, whatever you think is really crazy right now could very much be a reality in the future. I personally think there will be a lot more, um, I think there'll be like a lot more touch surfaces. Uh, obviously remote, remote work is big. 
I could easily see a lot of sort of augmented reality experiences, hopefully where you maybe don't even need uh, say VR goggles or anything like that. It's actually stuff that's floating there and it will detect your finger, even though it's not a physical button, just like they show in say minority report. Right. Right. You know, and the cool thing is like somebody needs to build that stuff. I'm, I don't, I might not be around, you know, who are going to be those next generation people that are like thinking about these things and how they work. But we do know that, you know, the fundamentals of visual design will, in my opinion, will never change. As soon as you learn color theory, color theory doesn't change. A good looking photo, you know, you're going to have warm tones and cool tones and cool tones push back, you know, and warm tones come forward, just like the skies, blue. It's all this fundamental stuff that doesn't change leading the eye you know like having having a main subject matter maybe it's not in the center but all that composition stuff that you learn in school is very important that you learn just from like taking photos like oh it's more interesting if i offset put the person off to the side a little bit and you know what you're applying there is like the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or whatever you want to call it but instinctually you realize that you're creating a better photo by just kind of changing the angle and adjusting the composition. So none of that stuff, even the stuff I learned in art school 25 years ago, my art history or my, uh, you know, color theory, um, typography, all those, all those classes on the fundamentals of design, um, you know, I use to this day, which is nice. Um, okay. You know, well, I'll, I'm, I'm going to challenge you on that one just for fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Here we go. I, yeah, here we go. Watch out. In that, you could say, let's say someone who's, you know, in kindergarten right now and they're playing with a VR or you know, whatever, they don't think 2D. They think 3D. I mean, mm -hmm. from the get-go, they don't have to go to mm -hmm. uh, the Photoshop button to, that says 3D. You know, that's, yeah. that's gonna, it'll be 3D. Yeah. Yeah. Like their brains will kind of be trained differently is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. What, right? what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that I, I think kids, obviously kids and sort of this young generation, they know how to adapt and, uh, you know, they know how to make an awesome TikTok video and in a highly edited TikTok video. It's amazing. Like, look at that. They just made this awesome piece of content that they gave away for free, which is another story. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, so I think they're tuned for it and it's awesome, you know? So that, I think it's cool that they're able to pick up this new stuff and I encourage them to do so, you know, for sure. So. All right. Well, um, so here's, let's, uh, if we could have your, cause you spoke, you've, you've talked to people, done trainings all over the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've kind of talked about sort of all this stuff, Photoshop and whatever everywhere um yeah okay so what from doing it everywhere uh obviously this is a uh we're focusing on indigenous indigenous people being able to tell their their story through their mm -hmm. perspective and and now having the skills to do that uh to not be told how to tell a story but to do it in whatever way they want mm -hmm. and I, I think you from that the earlier panel what you saw missy is doing is you know that's a, a really good example of uh, yeah I don't call it indigenous creativity. So from you talking to people all over the world, do you ever come across this this aspect of uh, people um, do, don't have a voice, even though they might have the tools and the skills, they're still kind of intimidated or uh, reluctant to express themselves in their own way. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yes, I think so. I mean, I, I just think of any teen, any in, insecure teenager, you know, and especially if you're kind of insecure and every, every teenager is insecure and vulnerable and scared to put themselves out there, you know, especially if you come from a culture that's so different from other cultures out there, it's just a scary place to say, Hey, will this world accept me? So it's more about kind of overcoming your own vulnerability because there's less of a like a technology limitation because anybody can upload an image to say Instagram or do a TikTok video. So, I mean, if, if you do anything, you just want to like encourage kids to, you know, um, I guess, I don't know, just try to be bold. And honestly, just don't, don't read the comments, you know, 
Just don't do don't read the comments. It's not and I get it. We find our self-confidence in likes. That's how we find our self-worth. And that's just a tough place. We do it to this day. It's like, yeah. If you could get around that, then you'll be more successful. Like compare yourself to yourself and not others or let others kind of define you. Yeah. You know, you'll just be a better, a better designer, but put your work out there, put it in front of the right people that can give you good advice and can encourage you is, is huge, I guess. We should say, Adobe, does Adobe actually pay you or are you a, just a yeah. expert uh, trainee? Uh, no, I'm so yes, yeah, so Adobe pays me. I'm on their, I'm on their payroll. Um, and uh, yeah, but even before this, I was like working for multimedia agencies and stuff like that. And I was, I would train and I used to be a paid trainer where I do these crash courses and Photoshop and stuff. And, and, you know, the, the short of it is like, they need somebody to tell everybody the cool things that they put in Photoshop. Cause if, if you don't know about it, then like, what's the point of it even being there uh, is, is the short yes. of it. So I try to get well, people excited, but I'm like so excited about the industry in general. So I'd be doing this even if they were paying me, but don't tell them that. No, just, so. nobody, nobody heard it. Don't worry. <laughs> so, so when you, you must come across some people like Nadanis who are very interested in, and not only they're very motivated to mm -hmm. uh, use Photoshop in a, in, it could be even in a professional way. Um, what advice do you have for people that, you know, are, are just going and searching through YouTube tutorials mm -hmm. to, to learn the next step? Yeah. Um, well, I honestly like definitely use YouTube because everybody uses YouTube. That's where you can find a ton of information. Just so you guys know, and I'm going to try to do this since everybody can see me. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to actually kind of display uh, the screen kind of behind me. So hopefully everybody can, can you still see my screen and all that stuff? Oh, that's that's kind of slick. How did you yeah. do that? It's just, it's just magic. It's magic, yeah, you guys, folks. It's amazing. Is that an Adobe thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is a whole other, a whole other story, but, but I did want to point out, you know, Behance is sort of a, a, an artist, like a creative network, um, you know, basically where you can peruse all these portfolios, like a Pinterest, if you will. But basically we do live streams here all the time. So if you just go to live streams, you could see somebody's uh, painting in an imaginary background uh, in Photoshop, right? And you could see a ton of videos as we scroll down in here. Like yesterday, I was talking about the five, just a masterclass, it's like the five different like types of logos. And I literally, since it's a live stream, I said, hey, who has a, who has a business? I'll go ahead and design a logo and kind of talk through it. So that's what I actually did yesterday. So I encourage people to get involved. The, the coolest thing, honestly, is we have the, um, uh, we have uh, daily creative challenges right here. In fact, I'm going to start one on Monday again, but just giving somebody a little task, just, you know, just a little bit of Photoshop, try to do this one thing and just to build up your confidence and you start stacking those, you know, skills one on top of the next, and you're really, really good before you know it. So that's, that's my, that's my shameless plug for my own, can, can for you, my uh, own videos. Can you shamelessly put that link in the, uh, Certainly. the chat? Because yeah. it would shamelessly like to exploit it. And, uh, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's where I'd encourage people to join. Cause like live streaming, you could actually interact with the person. So it's a, right. so it's a level up from, from YouTube. You know, you get ask yeah. a question. I'll literally read the chat. Oh, you wanted to know why, how this does that. Great. And also just like not be intimidated of yes of and Photoshop because this is the thing by the way I'm sorry to, can I just I'm getting excited I better calm down no we want you to get excited and then <laughs> talk to us about intimidation <laughs> yeah well and well this is this is the thing it's like in the past say with Photoshop which is what I have open uh, right now I have one of Nadanis's photos there I hope that's go. okay just for demo purposes <laughs> but like thing our technology has become so much easier these days I don't need to kind of find the right tool off to the side to try to select the person's hair it's literally like one click so I'll just zoom in on this remove background. That's all I want to do. So it's like the technology has gotten smart enough to say, hey, you know, you want to use a, a selection tool because you probably want to cut somebody out. Well, let us do that for you, right? So we click once and then she's did cut out. Did you do that? Wait a How second. Did we do, do that? that? Well, no way. It's, it's magic. So but that's, that, a, that's a, it's literally one button. 
This is where I say, oh, back in my day, I'd use a selection tool and a magic wand and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. You know, what's great is that literally in the, the class with Tashida, I hope you're, I, I can hear you laughing because uh, mm -hmm. literally this photography class, we go through, you know, A to B, it's introduction, mm -hmm. beginning and all that stuff. And we just did the selection stuff. Yeah. And we said, we're not going to just do magic wand. That's for the, that's for beginners. We're going to go <laughs> up to, you know, color or whatever. But you, you're taking it to a whole new level here. Yeah, and you know, it, it definitely helps because you do need to know the, the selection tools and all that stuff. Because like right down here, yeah, we kind of got to clean that up. I get it. So yes, you do need to know all the tools. I'm not saying everything is getting replaced by an easy button, um, but it's kind of looking that way. I mean, look what I did with her hair, by the way. It went through and cut out her hair like that, which is which pretty is, impressive. Which is phenomenal. And this is actually AI. This is artificial intelligence. Photoshop knows what what people look like. Hard edges for the shoulders. They know on top of the on top of the picture is going to be some hair that they need to kind of defringe and get out a trim. You know, basically. So that's what it is. It's trained on photos of people. Therefore, it says, "Hey, I recognize this as a, as a person. Let's cut out the hair appropriately," which is pretty but, impressive. So, how would if the if her original background was dark too was. Mm -hmm. Black. That, How would the yeah, AI know? That, that would be that would be another another situation where it would just be it would just be tricky to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I can try to find a, a harder, uh, you know, sort of situation. You know, but it's it, your results may vary. Like this this image, for instance, darker over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's going to do its best, and it might get you you know eighty percent there, but that's like you know eighty percent I didn't have to do. So right. let's try to yes. remove background. So there, it actually recognized and didn't select any of the fence, which wow. is pretty impressive. Yeah. So that's kind of what, what I'm saying. It's like, again, usually we say, oh, back in my day, we had the blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, you want to colorize a photo, you got to go and color, you got to select a paint tool. Or then the G and then the B. Yeah. And so and nowadays it's just super easy. So here's, here's just a photo, Native American woman that I just put, it's a uh, photo that I, just pulled off the internet. So this is a Native American woman with a child. So again, as far as telling your story and kind of bringing things to life, this is again, just one way to do it. We have neural filters. That's just a fancy word for, again, more machine learning, right? Because it recognizes people. It says, hey, I could recognize this as a person. Okay, since I know it's a person, I can colorize it as, if all, uh, as all the other you know, like photos that it's trained on. So again, I just hit colorize and yeah, it's still only 80, it's like 80% there, right? And mm -hmm. it was pretty impressive just by the, through the click of like one button. So let me, let me I, see I, if uh, we're getting close to the time, but let me see if uh, yeah. Giannis, are you still uh, in contact or with us? Yep, I'm still here. Do you have any questions you want to ask Paul? Now that you've seen- No, a whole bunch but of I magic? thought that was pretty dope. Paul, can you email me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can. Thank you for taking such good photos. They're like fun, perfect to play with, you know, if you Thank saw you. a second ago. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Serious we'll, dope. We'll, I mean, we'll I mean, that, I mean, it is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, it's people get concerned about, you know, augmented reality, or excuse me, like artificial intelligence and, and these machine learning, like taking our jobs and they're just making your job as a creative easier and is what okay. Adobe's perspective is. That's a positive one. Well, yeah. Paul, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll get the dentist to have a farewell chat or something. Is there anything you want to, to say to a words of profound wisdom to wrap up this panel? Uh, yeah, I would just say, don't, don't get discouraged. Right. And it's, it's still going to come down to hard work at the end of the day. It's like, you know what? It's you got to say, sometimes you're like, oh, this is life. This photo sucked. And I thought I was going to be cool. Guess what? 25 years later, I'm still dealing with that as a professional. So get used to, <laughs> hey, you know, what I'm saying, what is my advice? Get used to sucking. Is that what I just said? <laughs> no, just know that that's how you get better at the end of the day. Even when things don't turn out, it's like, that's a perfect opportunity where you know you're going to get better. So it's, think of it as a positive. Well, before one last question for you, Paul, is how do you how do you tell someone uh, to look for their passion? How do, how does how can someone find their passion? 
Yeah, it, uh, just try anything in, in, anything that interests you. Just try things that interest you. If you see a piece of art out there and be like, oh, how was that made? Try to reproduce that. I yeah, almost yeah. like steal like an artist, you know, just like try to do that and you'll learn from it. But you're also learning from what you're interested in. So the intrinsic motivation is is there. Good one. Uh, I like that one. Yeah, all right. Excellent. Well, thank you, Paul and uh, Nidanis. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, big uh, words of wisdom to pass along? Keep at it. Don't give up. There we go. Keep at we it. We all have different up. opinions, so just keep doing what you're doing. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ninanis. A safe uh, travels out to D.C. Give my regards to everyone out there. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and um, uh, Paul, appreciate it very much. That was, uh, you know, love the little magic uh, stuff in there. And uh, that, that was awesome. So really appreciate it. And you did put your, uh, the, uh, the link is in the chat. If anyone wants to uh, copy it, we'll keep a um, copy of it too, in case you need to get all of it. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, keep on being creative, I guess is what, what we're wrapping it up with. Okay, well, thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, Nidanis, you. Gigawabamin Minawa. Gigawabamin.